You can't be surprised. You at home, you better not be surprised. You had this coming, AJ. We gave you the big matches. We gave you the big pay-per-views. We made you a star. We paid you like a star while I struggled, while I starved, forcing myself to be a junior. Everybody called you a leader. Everybody called you the boss. Well, AJ, if you were the boss, I'm just gonna say it. You have now been fired. Whoa. This is your severance package, AJ. And from here on in, you guys know it. I am not a junior. I will not challenge Kushida. Shin Su King. Nakamura. Oh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I'm coming for you. And I'm coming for your title. Because the Bullet Club, we rule the world. The elite, we rule the world. Because Bullet Club is for, 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 for life. Except for AJ Styles. Goodbye and good night. Wow, Kenny Omega declaring his intention to move up into the heavyweight division and challenge for the IWGP Intercontinental. Vocabulary too. Uh, All the hits in the distant edition is all brand, brand new. new. You're through. I'm at the planetary uh, like Doctor Who. Who, who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. After four days in Brooklyn, the WWE concluded uh, the biggest weekend of their summer. Um, it's turned into a four-day weekend. Like we've run out Barclays for four straight days. Yep. Um, it's like we Sinatra or somebody. Well, we I said we like I work there. Like I was like you I joined well. the Rat Pack. But you need to. I should. I should have been drawn a paycheck that says WW. I might not even get direct deposit just because I want to see my paycheck the first time around that says WWE. After about the third time, I go ahead and <laughs> get direct deposit because, bam. <laughs> Ain't nothing like checking that bank account Thursday night going into Friday morning. All right. Boy, you be like, you today. Just like tomorrow night, bills. boy. Yeah. But before tomorrow you just be sad. Hey, man. That Friday morning when you strike to work, hey, if you ain't happy then, I don't know where you're going to be happy. You as rich as you going to ever be. Right then. <laughs> is, is right. The, you should be as happy as you can be because that's, that's it. It ain't going to get no better than exactly. that. You know what I mean? You put some gas in the car. You know what I mean? Go ahead, fill her up. Because you might not have opportunity in the five days. Maybe you're right. So, uh. You're right you know, about that. You can nickel a dime the, the rest of them two weeks. But for those of you who don't want to hear about that, hey man, it's Ring Time Pro Wrestling. Keith and Keisha are in the building. Um, wrestling has been fun. We are here to talk about it. We are here to partake yeah, right. in it. Uh, so, here we are. Uh, we are going to recap the weekend from Saturday working forward. If you have not noticed, we are here a day early. Well, actually, two days early. Because that is the new schedule. So, like we said, uh, pay-per-view previews will happen on Thursdays. Recaps will happen on Wednesdays. And then from there on, you will get our regular Friday shows until somebody pops off something major. Um, right now, I know that leaves like a sizable gap between the recap show and the next ring time. Uh, there may be some kind of small Sunday show thrown in there one day. I don't know. I don't, we'll figure it out, right? Uh, right. If, if you've been to the site, regular updates, crazy, right? Yes. Um, I'm trying to get that as a regular thing. And I notice you people show up with regular updates. So I appreciate everybody who shows up and clicks. Why you click? Hey, click before you shop on Amazon. 
click on one of the articles, click that Amazon uh, banner at the bottom, and then go shopping. We need the help. Um, or Target. Man, yes, we are a Target affiliate. I would like to throw that out there. Um, it doesn't cost you any more extra money. Does it throw anything, you know, extra in your cart, nothing like that? Don't change none of the prices. It just helps out the show that we provide for you guys um, on a weekly basis. So, that being said, uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of ramp up. I'm not going to do a whole lot of rundown. Um, Keish, overall, the SummerSlam weekend extravaganza, how did you feel about it? I was excited. Um, from Saturday to actually tonight, um, I was thoroughly excited to see all of it. Uh, I had a lot of expectations. None of them were met. Um, <laughs> I have to honestly say, like, um, there were some uh, expectations of mine that were met. But then, like, the majority of everything that I had thought was going to go down, yeah, none of that happened. None of that happened, and I was just kind of like, "Oh my god!" Stop like, reading internet rumors. My whole weekend. Don't. So no, 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 no. <laughs> it wasn't that. It was just like, okay, so when it came to the matches themselves, I was like, "Oh yeah, you know, this is my pick," and blah 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 blah. And then Keith, <clears throat> seven title changes. Seven. The entire week seven title changes between the two pay-per-views. Like, that to me in itself was already huge. It yes. was, I was done. I was yeah. done. Uh, major title changes. Um, debuts were good. Um, some better than others. Um, I'm going to tell you this. I thought Raw lacked the debut department. Raw lacked yeah, the big shocker the day after. Uh, yes, Sma- they did. SmackDown picked it up, but Raw lacked in the. We're good. We're gonna do something, you know, fun the day after a pay per view, because usually the day after the pay per view crowd is usually crazy. And I thought right. that right. I, okay. I'm not blaming the crowd. I thought the crowd did okay, but I felt like somebody didn't turn them in a product they could be happy with. Um, also. Uh, I'm going to play a Miz promo later on in the show. Keish, I think Miz was becoming a babyface, and they had to stop that shit. Yeah, they really did. Um, they did. I was just watching it a minute ago, and I'm like, damn, they, he had them in the palm of his hand. Oh, oh shoot. Everybody was like, yeah. But you and know Miz what? Miz was like, hold on, bro. <laughs> right. But understand. He was saying the things that a lot of people felt, right? Like his his. Right. Okay. I wrote this article a long time ago. Don't think hate the Miz. He's one of you. The Miz ain't nothing but a crazy fan that just got a job at the company. Right. So, like, some of his sensibilities are in touch with yours. Um. Hey, man. Cena has been Cena forever uh, right they obviously not giving up on this Roman Reigns push that shit man we can hang that up as a collective fan base this shit is worse than Sheamus right. you know at some oh, point yeah. I think they it's backed horrible. up off of Sheamus right they were trying to shove Sheamus down everybody's throat like, you realize Sheamus is a four time champion like world champion yes. but if you were to ask to point that out to people they'd be shocked are you serious yes I'm serious Shamans has won has won the title four times four times he's cashed in money in the bank um he has been a tag team champion what other titles has he had uh, I think he has, he, he's had the US championship so that makes yeah, him a Grand now, Slam champion, which I mean, think about right. this dude. Um, he's I mean, he's won everything. Like, <coughs> mind you, his first title I still could tell was a mistake. Nobody believes me when I right. say this. I really think John Cena was supposed to go through that table because the way he fell and everything happened, that shit like an accident, and they had to go with it. But 
because the table was gimmick, but it, it looked like an accident. Just by just by opinion. But uh, I digress. So we're gonna go through the week, recap it, hit the brakes, come back, same way we usually do a show. This one just gonna be loaded with more pay per view content, a little less raw SmackDown, uh, a little bit of news, and that's about it. So, uh, All right. without further ado, it is time for take over, take over. Oh, oh, go Brooklyn, go Brooklyn, oh, go. I just want to say that everybody got on my nerves this past weekend that said, that came out and said, where Brooklyn at? All of y'all got on my nerves. All of y'all. Every single one of y'all, I don't care. It doesn't even matter. Like, every single one of them that did that, I wanted to punch them in the throat. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Really? Like, that has to be, like, <sighs> I was like, okay, I'm done with all of y'all. Oh, okay. Like, for real, for real. All right, so I, 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 I'll leave the biggie on the sideline. With the well, the thing we'll about it was that, that, we'll put clear it. I got seven back elevens about eight thirty eight. Oh, sorry. You know what? I was fine with it when it was one or two, but like when it got past that, it was like, okay, are we all going to reference Biggie because we in Brooklyn? Like, is it what we doing? I just want to know. Amen. Just let me know so I can be prepared. Is so like, promo before he got in the cage was all Brooklyn bars. Yeah, I know. Big Jay Z, Little Kim, like he went all Brooklyn on you. Like I was like, and the crowd was just kind of like, mm. <laughs> okay, like the crowd. But the you know why? Because like, mm. the crowd is a bunch of transplant people who came to see the show, and yeah, you right about that. The ones who are from Brooklyn, let's just say they're from the 2017 Brooklyn. Which is markedly yeah. different from 1997 Brooklyn. It's very different, right? Yeah, you read about that. Now, so. before I turn this into something that people don't like, I'm going to get back into the wrestling. So, <laughs> hey, all right, five matches, big show, NXT TakeOver. Andre Alamas, he defeated Johnny Gargano, Keish. Had, I, I was mad about that shit. I'm sorry. Like, I was pissed about that shit. I thought this would be a good launcher for Gargano's solo career, right? Like, all right, it's time, it's time to go. Let's get it. Because, see, the thing is... Yeah, I'm a baker. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Thomas is out. He going to be out for a while. You know what I mean? And they'll pick their feud up when he gets back. You know, he'll... Right. He'll show up one day when we wouldn't expect it and jump my man from behind. Of course he will. But right now, he's not busy. And I think you can build him up as a, as a singles competitor. And then when his partner comes back for a feud, it'll be even bigger because he'll have a higher profile. But, right. you know, it is what it is. Uh, but, yeah, I, I didn't like that. Um... Keish, I think you picked this one. I didn't. Sanity defeated the Authors of Pain. I did. I was excited about this one. Like, I was like, um, yes, Lord. But Nikki, Nikki didn't have to sacrifice herself like that. It was awful. I was like, I mean, yes, no. Yes, sometimes like, you got to do what you got to do for the team. She was, she was a casualty of the war. Like, yeah. I <laughs> I mean, it, it was a match that saw Paul Ellering and everybody get involved, and I mean, right? Which, hey man, Paul still looked good. I, I want you to understand, Paul was a retired wrestler when he was managing the Road Warriors in nineteen eighty. Yeah, I'm just, I want you to understand, he was managing in the eighties. <laughs> that was thirty he years was ago, out there. And when it was over, he was standing over there, man. He looked defeated. I was like, damn, Paul. He was a middle-aged man in the, in the man. 80s. I'm just saying. But he's still <laughs> spry. And he's still out there getting it. Right. Uh, Showtime EY. Keith, 
here's the thing. Hypothetically speaking, let's say you ran TNA from like 2007 to like 2012. I'm just, I'm just making up numbers, right? All right. Wouldn't you be at home drinking some Jack Daniels bad as hell at yourself how you couldn't figure out how to get from point A to point B with the current power structure that's in WWE right now? I don't even piss. Like, I probably would have, like, I'm just saying, my head against the wall somewhere. AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Bobby Roode, Eric Young, all these dudes are on one roster at the same time, right? Right. Just checking. And I remind you, at that time, y'all had our healthy Kurt Angle, who was putting right. on incredible right. matches. Okay. Um,. <laughs> Man, shoot. Y'all got some good late game Booker T. Y'all, y- Sting, st- Sting was healthy and going. I, y'all fucked up a lot, man. Spike TV was a nice national platform, Keish. But I digress. Spike TV was an awesome platform. Shout out to Eric Young. Uh, good guy. Met him once. Um, yeah. Uh, very, very talented. Um, the dude, I think he has an underrated promo, right? Like, right. he can talk you into the to the building. And he's little, but he's believable. I like that gruff voice of his. Uh, too bad Daniel Bryan is hurt, man. Let me tell you. Right? Eric Young would be on my top five da- Daniel Bryan matches. Why? Because... Just like how okay, I posted something on Twitter. Well, somebody posted on Twitter and I retweeted it. It was uh, a picture of, like the duel at Spider Man's. They said Triple H and Bobby Roode at the office on Sunday, looking like, "Hey, you." Shut <laughs> <laughs> up! Like I seen that crazy business, and I was like, "Really? Shit. You are awful." Right, but they very similar styles. Very a lot of things are very similar, right? Bobby Roode is a lot of evolution Triple H uh, That being said Daniel and Eric Don't wrestle alike But they had a lot of the same thing going Like I think TNA literally Thought like yo We gonna put the belt on Eric Because this Daniel Bryan Thing is cracking We got our yeah. old goat boy kind of thing <laughs> The only thing I, I thought That was done better is that TNA book Young better than WWE was booking Brian? Yeah, we both can agree with. But then they abandoned the whole shit. That. But just fast forward some years later, WWE has it all. They won. Yeah. If you ever don't understand who won the wrestling war, it's just them. Like they won the war. They. It is to the point now. Hey man, your <laughs> shit get cracking. They will come steal your girl. Like it's almost like, look, I don't even want y'all know the party cracking over here because I want y'all coming over here taking the fire ones. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so Sanity wins and they defeat the Arthur's of Pain. Um, new tag team but? champions. Now that being said, the show that should be the story. Right. But. Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish show up. Now, if you don't know Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, you might say, hey, ain't them two dudes who got their ass whooped last week and the week before that? Yes. They were. They got their ass with the singles competitors. Understand, right. at ROH, these dudes was one of the most dominant tag teams in the last two or three years. Right? Right. They just come to WWE. And they were they were introduced separately on individual days for individual matches, but they showed up together at Takeover and they took over. Like they, I guess they saw Takeover and said, "That's what we supposed to do." We looked at it as a title. They looked at that shit as a mission statement because they would <laughs> everybody ass. They went there and just started beating the hell out of everybody. Like I was like, "This is a hostile Takeover." Okay. Right. But I mess this with it. Uh, these little guys got a big streak. But which is very funny watching wrestling twenty seventeen. 
Once again, 1997. Keisha some 18 to watch a wrestler. I'm like, I can't do that shit. I'm too damn small. And I felt like this. I was so small and I couldn't flip. Because I felt like it would be my size that work at wrestling. You had to flip. Really, really? No Everybody was high flyers Well Now Keisha You know I was Remarkably skinnier Than I was now You know I was a Football player But I was still I was kind of slim I couldn't body slam nobody Like I would, my, my move had to be Dive off something Uh Nah Nah I wasn't doing that Cause I'm like Man I ain't about to go through a table Trying to make myself look good Right. I mean, right. that's no, because that's a legitimate thought process, though. It is. A person with sense would have that thought process. Amen. You know, I don't think going through a table is a good idea. Right. I'm good on that. Yeah. Like, they, they, no. They wouldn't look at it and be like, oh my God, that's awesome. I want to do that. Trust and believe that is not a normal thought. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> like, here's uh-huh. the thing. Now, I say this to say this. Uh, Raw Now Raw is kind of different Raw is kind of the big man show Like I probably could be On the big card or something Raw But Smackdown I'm bigger than all them dudes Like (laughs) 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 NXT I I can start stepping over the rope Like I'm big show Like I (laughs) Really key Just really just this is an observation, Keish. This an observation. <laughs> but uh so yeah, uh Alistair Black defeated Hideo Tommy. Uh Keith. we kinda called that. Keith. Yes, ma'am. Can we talk about that black mask that he hit Otami with? Oh yeah. my god. Like it echoed <laughs> and like everybody felt that. Yeah. Like yeah. if you didn't feel that it was a wrap. Like, I'm just saying. One thing I've noticed about Black is that he's stiff. Like, I don't necessarily know where he came from. I don't really need to follow him coming up. But, man, this dude is stiff. He, it's funny because he wrestled that way with a Tommy. It's like, hey, man, you came from Japan. You used to this. Right. He was like, nah, nah, not really. Not, no, I, I kind of been over here a while. I've been over here a couple of years. This shit hurts. <laughs> Which that's why with wrestling, I don't use the term fake. I use scripted. Cause uh hey man, ain't nothing fake about getting kicked in the chest. No, it's really not. That, that not. sounds like some of the worst shit that can happen to me right now. Just because of my age, and I, 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 I got to an age where I realized I know why people buy guns. Like, right? Look, man, I saw a dude who had the perfect T-shirt. Like, look, I'm too old to fight and too young to die. So, uh, that's why I carry my pistol. Because I'm too old to fight and too young to die. Like, you ain't just gonna whoop my sense. ass. But uh, you know, we gonna end this early. But it makes sense. I mean, okay. So imagine you, because some other wrestlers, they go through actual, like, match rehearsals, as me and you both know. So imagine going through this rehearsal for this match, and they being like, all right, so you're going to go for me, I'm going to swoop under, I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to hit you in the chest one good time. And my first thought process would be like, no, you're not. Because that sounds awfully painful, and I'm not dealing with that shit. Like, mm. <laughs> like, like that would be like the end of the conversation for me, right there. And like, can we talk about this? Let's talk about this. You will not be kicking me in the chest. Like, that's just not. That's not even an option. Like, what the fuck? Mm. Like those chops. Like, sometimes those chops to the chest are like the worst thing ever. Like, they sound, and you could see like they're the worst thing ever. Like, it's like whelps on people. And it's like, are you serious? This is what y'all do? Mm. My One of my friends, um, they they pretty much summed up wrestling for me. Wrestling is a TV show. 
That's yes. what wrestling is. Yes. Wrestling is a TV show. That is the best. I'm, that's exactly how I'm going to describe wrestling from now on. Wrestling is a TV show. It has a script. You know, it has athletes. Like, they act out the script. And then, now, the only thing about it to me is it's not all the way scripted. There's some things that are a little off, you know, that are, like, improvised or however you want to, you know, implement it in there. But for the most part, it's scripted. They know what they're going to do. They know what's going to happen. And, like, that's pretty much the end all and be all of it. But then you have the moments that's not. It's a TV show. Right. It's a TV show. Now, if you want to compare it to, like, okay, what kind of TV show it is, reality TV. Yeah. There go your. There you go. It's reality TV. Mm. Um, that's the best thing I can describe it against. It's like a soap opera mixed with reality TV. Like that's exactly what it is. So, at the end of the day, why like, this is what they do? Um, injuries are not. Of course, injuries are not thrown into the script. Like they don't. They don't. No, they don't know that they're going to get hurt. Like that's just dumb. Mm. Who the hell knows that they're going to get hurt? Right. Like yeah, you gonna you gonna uh you gonna hurt your wrist in this thing? No, that don't happen. Like, what do you mean? Like, we gonna have you out for like six months? That's just stupid. Like, no one does that. Um, some stuff is just done, but like, I'm sorry, I'm not taking kicks to the chest and face yeah. and no, mm -mm. especially those kicks. If you've had any kind of Japanese have any kind of training in Japan, no. <laughs> like, I'm just not even going to, because, like, no. Just no. Strong mm. style wrestling is something I am not, I am not fucking with. Like, I am good. <laughs> I'm good. I don't need to prove I'm that tough. I'm straight. That's just a little too much for me, so... I digress. I've gone all the way off into this tangent, Keith. Right. Yeah. Let me let me bring myself back. Okay. Because we got more wrestling to talk about. Easy. Oscar, NXT champion, defends her title successfully against <sighs> Ember Moon. Keith, okay, so I was wrong with this one, man. You have to pick Oscar until she loses because I mean, shit. No, I don't. I don't wanna. <laughs> I don't wanna. <laughs> okay, in theory, I would have been happy if Ember won. Um, I wanted her to win, but I just thought it was Oscar's world. Now, things have been altered now. You know what I mean? But right. we'll get to that later in the show. But who? Okay, I, I put this up there for possibly match of the night. I felt like they really did a good job, both of them, and it was very believable. Oh, they brought it. They brought it hard. And it was believable. Like, um, I was crying with Amber at the end, man. Like, I, that match was brutal. It was intense. Now, I, um, it had, but you know what? The one thing I do say is Amber doesn't come, come out of this match looking any less of a wrestler than Oscar does. Like, right. To me, you can't possibly sit there and say, like, that um, she ain't a strong wrestler. Like, it's, it's, it's not even possible to take that away from her. Like, I was enthused by it. I watched that match intensely because I knew. I was like, man, this is going to get deep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this is going to be deep. And it was. It was a hard fought match between two women that just it blew my mind. I mean wholeheartedly. And even though I was looking for Amber to win, of course I give Oscar I mean I give Oscar her uh her due. Like, you can't possibly take that away from her. I mean hell. Now she's been champion what, five hundred and what what is it now? Four days, eight days? Something like that. I'm not sure the exact number. I just know it's been over 500 days. Yeah. She's the longest reigning champion. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's 
it is. This is, but now I have to wonder. Now this definitely makes me wonder how much deeper does this get? You know what I'm saying? Like, how much longer does she hold on to the title? What happens with her undefeated streak? What are they going to do with her when they're ready to move her up to the main roster? You know, like that, that to me, because they can't make her go out in some lame ass way. You know what I'm well, saying? I think she's fixed all that for them. Uh, or, or she has it. Like I always say, like she did it on purpose. But I think all of that has been kind of fixed. So right. it, it's just a matter of her showing up when it's time to show up somewhere. It, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah. We'll see how it all works out. Uh, so, yeah. Very, very. How do I say this? Uh, very, very eventful show. Um, very eventful show. Um, let me go ahead and uh, go to the next match. Drew McIntyre defeated Bobby Roode to be the new NXT champion. Yep, he sure did. Now, he I thought, sure did. I thought they had one hell of a match. Um, hey, three of Bita came a long way, Keith. Keith, when the crowd chanting that, like, it was so hilarious to me when they started chanting that. I was like, are you serious? I would have loved for Jinder to be at the top of the ramp with the world title clapping like, that's my dude. Right. Uh, uh, he don't need to be there because he's been there the whole time. Uh, and hey, I got kids. <laughs> right, right. Hey man. But yeah, they were three MB, three MB. I was like, wait, are y'all serious? Like, but at the same time, that was my first thought when when Jinder became a WWE champion. That was my first thought. I was like, so you mean to tell me this guy was from three MB? To WWE champion, are you serious? Like Drew, I I had forgot Drew was even a part of Three MB at one point, and then I, I was reminded when the crowd reminded everybody of it, and it was like, oh man, he was a member of Three MB, wasn't he? Look at him now, boy, he gonna glow up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, grown up. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh man. That was a hard felt for for a match too, though. Him and Bobby Roode, like I, I want to say they stole the show, but like it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. So, ah, uh, you know, Drew sitting there basking in his glory. And then, you know, then there's the ending of NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 that was just like, really? You know, I'm starting to see a trend in the endings of TakeOvers right now. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that for right now. Oh, yeah. I mean... I, I'll let you... I'll let you won't bring it out because I mm-mm. here's the thing um, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly showed up again and hey man that was great but then when Adam Cole made his debut now mind you we had just heard Adam Cole officially sign like last week right but hey man he they had a plan of I guess early because and maybe he had been sad, and they just decided this is how they was going to bring him out. Like, they was going to mention he's sad. That, that news was going to leak, you know, early right. enough. And then, like, bam. Now we're going to go to the, he's here. And he's here. And he decided to kick the shit out of everybody. <laughs> so, I mean, like, they they here. So now, 
these are your three new guys. I don't right. want to use the term invasion, even though I did use it on Saturday night, but we might be coming up on an invasion. Or some kind of angle. Uh, now, now this will be interesting. Mm-hmm. And apparently, they all want titles. Fish and O'Reilly want the tag team belts. And I think Adam Cole wants the world title. Like, they want to Adam take Cole, all the belts. Baby. When did he start that? <laughs> Adam Cole knows he's awesome. That's the problem. He knows he's awesome. Yeah, they're not coming for just no reason. They out for blood. Like, they like, no, nah, we ain't just going to be here doing nothing. Like, having matches every week and that. that nah, we want these titles. So, if we got to move through y'all to get them, oh well. Like, we are not playing with y'all today. Or any other day. We come for these, for this gold. That's what we come for. So, yeah. give it up. Or get stomped out and give it up. Either way it goes. Ain't gonna be on your waist much longer. No. So, see, with their fight, with Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, they, they, they gotta take on four members of Sanity. <laughs> and I say four because you know they're always gonna help. So, they got to take on four members of Sanity. Now, with Adam Cole, you know, he can face Drew McIntyre. Like, yeah, it ain't that bad. But at the same time, Drew is a different person than he was when he was with 3MB. So, don't think you're going to get 3MB Drew McIntyre. That ain't going to happen. Um, this is a different thing for them. So, now we get to see all three of these wonderful men in NXT and it's going to get real real fast so I'm excited for them all three of them uh, congratulations to Drew and to Oscar and to Sanity um, for their wins um, in these title matches uh, that's the, the, the NST take over Brooklyn three is what started the the seven title changes. Right. Seven. Seven. Well two were ridiculous. on that show, right? Right. Two were on the show. Two were on that show. And um uh, the other five, of course, was on was had to do with SummerSlam. But I mean it's SummerSlam, you know what I'm saying? And it had to have been one more title match I'm pretty sure no actually I would say that person probably would have retained the title but anyway that's mm-hmm. not the point the point is um it was seven title changes mm-hmm. that's crazy but it is what it is so it was a great success NXT TakeOver Brooklyn um, they're gonna have, of course, NFC. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have NFC take over Brooklyn for next year when they do SummerSlam again in Brooklyn. So something to look no, forward to. But this is an official event. Like, understand, everything now is going down. Like, this is what's going to happen at, in August every year. To the point of a uh, rig time field trip probably should be getting ready to be sponsored because that's the probably only you know, way we can I make this work. I was definitely thinking about that, and I was going to talk to you about that. But you know, uh, it's, it's trust me, Keith. It's something that needs to be discussed. So, I, uh, you know me, I'm, I'm willing. I just got to get these stones together. That's all that is. Right. So, um, I am perfectly happy with that one. Right. Uh, with that, uh. I guess it's time for a short break and then we'll get into the recap of SummerSlam and then kind of go to the rest of the show. Uh, We'll be back shortly. And with that... Here's Mike. You don't get to talk until I say you talk. This is a special edition of Ms. TV. See, I have 10 years of frustration to get off my chest because you have cost me so many opportunities. Oh, and you smile. 
You smile, and if that microphone was on, you'd say, my arrogance cost me those opportunities. But let's be honest, John. Your word to the bosses, to the higher-ups, is gospel here. You're at the top of the mountain in the WWE, and it's not because you're good. It's because you manipulate every single person that comes in your way. Let me explain this. Let me make it more clear. You ever been in a job and you wonder, how does this guy get to be where he is? And then you watch him and he talks to the right people, makes the right connections. He smiles at the right time. And then there I am, working 10 times as hard, 10 times more talented, and trying to do all I can, and all I become is the other guy? Let me explain something to you, John. Let me explain something to you, John, before I was so rudely interrupted. I am not the other guy. Nope, Miz is not the other guy. At least that's what he was just telling. Not you. the other guy. I am the Miz. And you know, it's funny because I sit there and say that I'm not the other guy, but you won't let me be anything else than the other guy. But the other guy. And you know what? And here's an example. WrestleMania is right around the corner, and there was a time when I was main eventing WrestleMania against you. And I did it. I beat you. I was handed the golden opportunity. My leg. All right. I think that one is it. Okay. That promo cuts out kind of weird. But uh, Miz was angry. Very angry, Miz. Uh, I might have some more angry bits for you just because hey man that dude is gold when he's angry uh, at, at Raw today I mean two days ago he had the truth bombs I mean left right right left right to the point like I said uh, I think we had a new baby face but uh, the WWE was like uh, we can't be having bits out here as the baby face Kind of need him as a heel. Plus, they're not ready to give up old Roman Reigns. John Cena. They're not. They're not ready to give up those those players. But, uh, we are going to come back and head into SummerSlam. Uh, SummerSlam, uh, was four hours long. Like, four hours of some change. Yeah, it was. I think we're going to have to stop doing that. Because you had three pre-show matches, so basically you tried to take all my time from six for what five p.m. to eleven uh, p.m. eleven thirty. That's a lot of time, Keith. That is a lot of time. I, that's me being at work. You right. literally turned this shit into a job while I'm trying to watch wrestling. <laughs> but you're not paying me for it, and I don't like it. Like. Yes. What are you doing? And even then, <laughs> I still got to force myself to stay awake. Right? Uh, didn't force myself for this shit. I went to sleep. I, I basically... <laughs> look, I watched SummerSlam in like three different settings. So, I had to wake up and then go back and watch the matches that I missed. Then... I missed some of those, so I had to do it again. It took me about four days to watch SummerSlam all together. And NXT. Oh, my God. And Raw. And SmackDown. It, it took the whole four days. Okay. Okay. So. And I, hey, man. It's still parts of Raw I missed. I'm just telling you right now. Shit, shit got real. Okay. I'm not going to lie. When it came to Raw, like, I got through, like, half an hour and I was like yeah I'm ready to go to bed 
So I went to bed. Like I literally did not watch any anything else from Raw. I think I made it as far as I you know, I didn't even make it to Cena coming out. I had, I was in bed before that. Like I didn't even know that happened until like the next morning. So yeah, I was well, I was just I was done because I literally sat back and watched I watched um Take over Brooklyn and I watched SummerSlam like in their entirety. Um, even I even watched an hour of the pre show for uh SummerSlam. So like I watched all of that. So like Monday came and I was tired. But like, I was like, Okay, I'm going to bed. I'll watch this tomorrow and I just watched the condensed version they have on Hulu. And I was like, Hey, I can't <laughs> Like I was just like, Okay, I can't do this. Um, SmackDown was a struggle. Uh, I watched 205 Live. Like, it was, all of it was a struggle. So, you're right, though. Having a two-hour pre-show and then a four-hour pay-per-view, that's a lot. Yeah. That's six whole hours you taking out of my life and you ain't paying me for it. As a matter of fact, if you want to get technical, I'm paying you for it. Really? I'm paying you for six hours of talking and like because two hours of that is literally a majority of it is talking all they're doing is doing recaps and video packages and top previews for the match and uh they have these three matches they done put together and it's like oh my god y'all could have saved all that and we could have just had this pay-per-view you know yep um so with that being said we're gonna get into this pay-per-view uh, whew. okay. Let's talk about it. So, in the three pre-show matches, let's start. Uh, the Miz crew actually got a win. Keish, the Miz to Raj beat the Hardys and Jason Jordan. Um, uh, I was shocked. I thought they were clearly about that. It would clearly go to him, but you know, we we go into this Jason Jordan push. Yeah, no. allegedly. See, I'm not. I'm not mad about. Uh, Jason Jordan and the hardest loser. I mean, that was that was awful. That kind of sucked too. But that was just a waste of a match for the Intercontinental Champion. Like, come on, man. Seriously. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'm not going to go into that whole I mean, rant and rave yeah. about that. I mean, Intercontinental Champion probably should be on the main show. Yeah. 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 But let's go. So, we'll, we'll go ahead. Uh, but they won, so they not just totally the job squad. Uh, Neville regains the cruiserweight title, beat the Kira Tozawa. I was actually mad about that. I was yeah. because yeah, I thought this I would wanted, be the, the long reign of Ozawa and the Titus O'Neil brand. I said Ozawa right. Tozawa. Yeah. Titus Worldwide is the hottest thing going right now in my eyes. And I really needed for Tozawa to actually win that death fight. So I was mad. I was sad. I was like, they did they really just give Neville the title back? Why? Why? Like, Neville can win it back later on in life. Like, why would they do this right now, six days after he just lost it? It was. I was really pissed about that. I was. I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I. I don't like it when they do hot potato with the belt, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it's awful, and I can't stand it. So <sighs> it is what it is now. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, especially, I agree. Especially how Tazawa came out with it. It was awesome. That's what I'm talking about. But you know. Whatever. Anyway. <sighs> okay. Sorry. It was it was the whole pre show just kinda irked me. It did. Pre show matches always irk me because there's something about that match that makes me be like, Yeah, this should have been on the main show or yeah, I don't understand why they're doing this right now, but I digress. I'm having my own issues with, with pre shows. I can't stand them. I normally don't even watch them, but I had to this time. I'm glad I did because the third match that they had in the pre-show was worth seeing. It was definitely worth watching. 
All right. So. Um, but yeah, Neville wins. Uh, and another match that we probably felt like shouldn't have been on a pre-show. I just think they called the pre-show. They ain't got nowhere else to put all this shit, though, Keish. You know what, Keith? They didn't. And I give you that. I do give you that. They didn't have all their, nowhere else to do it. Because cause you got four hours of pay-per-view, and you have four, you have four hours of pay-per-view jam-packed with shit. And some mm-hmm. of that shit you didn't even need. So, but we'll get to that when we talk about that. But, yeah. I mean, then you trying to fit in all these matches you have. Two, two tag team title matches that you had to do, two women's title matches, two two uh, championship matches. That don't even include the U.S. title, and uh, you have an intercontinental title, but then that don't, and then the cruiserweight title. So, I mean, Jesus, and that's not even including like the miscellaneous matches that you had with just people in feuds. You know what I'm saying? Some of that stuff you could have saved. Some of the stuff that shouldn't even have happened. But it is, it is what it is. So there was places where they could have inserted at least one or two of these matches. But, you know, no. So that's why we had to sit through six hours of wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the New Day uh, loses the tag team titles to the Usos. Usos got their belts back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love the Usos. Did I ever tell you how much I love the Usos? Uh, I mean, no. I'm just saying. They're awesome. Yeah. Like, and they're, and that, that theme, that theme music, if I could find it with the words, that's going to become my ringtone. That's all I'm saying. Like, I need people to be on their day one-ish. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I want one of those hoodies. I want one of them hoodies for the wintertime. And the fall, I I want one of those hoodies. Okay. I need, but let me stop. I need to get my life together. So, oh, people don't be confused. I love the new day too. The Usos are just they're just awesome. I'm talking right there, talking about it right now because they're the tag team champions. So mm. it is what it is. But then we get to SummerSlam. Yay! Yay. SummerSlam. All right. All right. Uh, Yay. Opening match. John Cena versus Barrett Corbin. A uh, Barrett Corbin who mm-hmm. recently lost to Buddy in the Bank briefcase. Right. Uh, he lost to John Cena again, too. Keish, is it safe to say RIP the push of Barrett Corbin? Yeah, of course it is. Keish, this is what didn't get that I didn't get about this whole match, right? Baron Corbin was kicking John Cena's ass throughout right. the whole match, right? Right. And then out of nowhere, Cena hits him with an AA and it's over. Like, I was like, that was dumb. Like, what the hell? Right. If you were going to have it that way, then you could have at least gave Cena a fighting chance in the match itself. Like, why would you even set it up like that? It was stupid. I was like... Okay, yeah. this is the direction we're going with this type of view. I can already see how this is headed. So mm. yeah, it was it was just weak. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Um Natalia defeated Naomi. Uh made her tap for the new women's SmackDown title. Keith, I did not expect that one. No, I didn't either. I can't stand Natty. Well, I'm not gonna say I can't stand her. She's annoying though. She's very annoying. All right. Um, uh, I think she's a little goody two shoes on Total Divas. Other than that. Oh, my God. So, I just started rewatching that. And, yeah, you right about that one. Except for when she dragged Summer Rae out that car. Because that was kind of hilarious. But other than that. Well, well Summer Rae. Let me, let me stop. Because I'm going to get into it. But Summer Rae deserved that shit. That's all I'm saying. Um, But I'm not. Mm-mm. I'm not doing it. Right. Uh, Natty does get a little annoyed, but I don't ever downplay Natty's wrestling abilities. You know what I'm saying? Because that would be retarded of me. Um, she's awesome in the ring, but sometimes it's just well, like, yeah, Natty. Well, that's one thing I'll say about Natty. I think that's really cool with Natty. Um, I think she's long deserved to be in this spot. 
Like when they changed yeah. to Women's Revolution, I thought she would be at the forefront of it because I right. think she, I always saw her as the real wrestler. We was in the Barbie doll era. But see, uh, they do natty dirty. Like after watching Trolls Eagles, I realized how they do and what they do with natty. And at times they do natty very dirty. They just kind of be thinking natty as a second thought as opposed to an actual like superstar because right. when they they did bring up the women and the women's resolution and whatever like that you didn't see natty nowhere and it was like why you know mm -hmm. um the one thing okay if you ever watch if you ever watch the table for three with maurice um eve torres and kelly kelly the one thing they brought up in that in their conversation that was a good point was that the divas uh the time of the divas was kind of like forgotten about like once they had the women's revolution and like they um presented it that way with Hage and Charlotte you know and all of them like it was like the divas thing had never happened like once they changed the belt and all that kind of stuff like they don't give recognition to like the divas no like it goes from like literally goes from like Lita and Trish and their era to like the women's revolution like it's completely skips over divas and the divas championship and like everybody that was involved and unfortunately natty well the the crazy part about it was you just put Beth phoenix in the hall of fame and that was the time that she was around you know and that but then when you talk we talk about natty it's like oh yeah natty you know but you but i'm like she was a part of that too you know this was the time that she started like it was like really I mean you can't pick and choose when you're going to actually acknowledge these ladies or not y'all made them that way that wasn't their choice y'all made it this day y'all brought out women's wrestling at that time in that manner so because they used to talk of, they talked about how short their matches used to be and all that kind of stuff like it wasn't just something that we joked about and was like yeah because they had these like this was reality for them and I think Natty is well deserving of this position as well that just does that don't make me think that she's any less annoying <laughs> like I but I do give her her props you know I do give her her props so I just wish it wasn't Naomi that she took the title from that's all I'm saying it had, well, it had to be Naomi Keith. It had to be like that. Ow, 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 ow. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of a weird thing, right? I felt like one person is deserving, but should it have been at the expense of the other person? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thought that was um, weird. But it did happen, so... I mean, what can you do? Yeah, what can, what you, do? can you do? Right. So, let's go. Uh, Big Chaos defeated Big Show. Uh, Enzo oh. snuck out the cage and got knocked out. I thought this was like the devil's match of the world. I think heel cages to be are reserved for heel managers. All uh, that was just dumb. Too. All of it was dumb. All of it was dumb. When he took his clothes off and put that stuff all over him and stuck out that cage just to get booted, it was like, what was the point, Enzo? What was the point? You jumped down, and then you was out in two seconds. What was the point? What was the point? <sighs> I swear, I was so done with that whole... That's one match that could have been on a pre-show. That could have yeah. put that on a pre-show. Yeah. Like, Really? Really? They could have put that on the pre-show, and they could have swapped it out with one of the title matches. Like that was it was reckless. It was just horrid. So, besides, I didn't think that match should have happened any damn way. I'm like, uh, I understand that y'all want this feud between Cass and Big Show and whatever. It was just dumb. 
mm-hmm. all of which is dumb. So, what match was next? What was after that? Because I yeah. don't remember. Okay. Um, after that is Randy Orton versus Rusev. Um, it was a little weird match. Rusev attacks Orton prior to the match. Then after that, or I mean Rusev just say forget it, you can have it. And Shane's back in the rep. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Randy Orton uh, hits the RKO out of nowhere, like three minutes after the bell ring. So that happens. Um, yeah. What was up with that two second match? Was that just for how it was supposed to be? I I think we cut the fat because we still got a lot of show to talk yeah. about. Yeah, you right about that. All right, let's continue. Um, from the flip side of that, Sasha Banks, new women's champion on Raw. Shout out to Sasha for winning at the pay per view and not on Raw. Uh, shout out to Sasha uh, for overcoming whatever odds she had to overcome. Yeah. But, uh, hey man, she did it. She defeated Alexa Bliss. Right? Which, is that why they we lost? They said we can't have both our women's champions be black? But that's BS though. Like, come on, man. No, I'm just asking. Let black girl magic spread everywhere. I'm just asking. I'm not accusing Mm-mm. anybody because I don't want to get sued. Look, I don't get me started, Keith, because you know I will. I'll get all in that. Mm-mm. Yeah, did those letters from lawyers like like no, nah, that's okay. Um, yeah, no. But yeah, pull it back. Sasha Wiz, <laughs> uh, Finn Baylor defeats Bray Wyatt, and he introduces the world to the demon. The demon. Oh, as the demon king. Uh. uh it's awesome. It's amazing. All of it. <laughs> right. All of it. So, um, of course, I was rooting for Finn. I was like, Finn, yeah. I was excited because it was a, it's very, you know, um, somebody asked, uh, uh, I'm in this group, and they asked, they was like, how does it, why doesn't his paint come off on the other wrestlers? And I was like, well, they probably use a theater paint, you know, or, or they have a coating over the over his paint so that it doesn't come off on anybody else or smear, you know, mm. um, because those paint jobs are made. I just found a video on YouTube that was a collective video of like his ten best like paints. Um, and I, it was amazing because you forget that he's just been all these characters and whatnot before mm. WWE. So, of course, I was cheering for saying, "Why not?" Right? Why not? Right? Mm, 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 mm. But um, okay. Yeah. So then there was there was Finn and then after Finn There was uh now we have- Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins uh defeat Sheamus and Cesaro to be the new tag team champions. Uh the only thing I can say about that, Keish, so they didn't have to chase the belts. No. They didn't have to build up to it. Uh nope. they didn't have to develop their tag team uh symmetry or nothing like that. Not not even a little bit. So the rated champs, they just knocked them off for the first try without like no struggle. To uh, uh, of course, yeah, because that's just how you do it, you know. Okay, that's how they roll. Just making sure I'm going down the list, right? I mean, hell, don't get me wrong. If I can do it, you know what I mean. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so that happened. Uh, AJ Styles defeat Kevin Owens uh, retains the U.S. title. Um. Uh, Match ended again in controversy on the second. I mean, not the second, but the second day of the week, which is Tuesday. Uh, could probably expect another revolution or something. I don't know. Mm, but, mm, uh, mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. do you think 
Roman Reigns returns to the Shield before the end of the year. I have had a couple of conversations about the theories about how he's going to return to the Shield before the end of the year. So it's not even a question. It's more like when and how, you know? Like, when is that when they took the time out to uh, make this happen? Right. Right. Yeah, exactly what that happened, and then it was like, okay, so how do you incorporate him with Seth and Dean, especially with them being a tag team champions right now? I mean, I'm pretty sure before the end of the year they end up losing, dropping the belts, but at the same time, it's like, how do you weave them into this equation? Because it would be just weird if they just kind of all three of them together or something like that. Like, it just really needs to be thought out and processed. Right. Yeah. But, uh, AJ wins. Uh, Shane, not really a factor. Kevin always pretty much cost himself. Uh, so, with that, we get down to the two main events, right? Jinder Mahal defends yes. his his title against Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, with the he, help of the thing, brother. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Boo. people were pissed about that ending. Yeah, they were. Thoroughly. I, I wasn't pissed. I mean, I felt like they did their job. Like, everybody was where they're supposed to be. Except for the ref. I feel like the ref sat there and watched it happen. And I'm like, you moron. Not on your right. watch. You stopped the match. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. no. No. Uh, no, man. If the people need medical attention, they know how to get it. You know, SmackDown refs have been effing up these days. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But yeah, uh, gender won. Uh, One thing I learned from this match, the WWE wanted an international main event or co-main event. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Because they speak in Hindi, and I before the match and or during the match and it's like huh and it was like they ran off make sure they say gender Mahal like that's all I can understand for what they were saying uh then it goes to the next one where uh nobody's really there for Nakamura and all that but yeah they have the match the Singh brothers get in they do it in front of the ref. Nobody even tries to turn the ref around and distract you by the other one getting beat up. Nope. Right here in front of you, ref. What you go do? What you go check out? But, yeah. So, that happened. We're safe. Uh, Brock Lesnar successfully defended his universal title against Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, and Samoa Joe. Keish. Yes. Uh... I felt like this was the Braun Strowman, like, just in case you don't know, now you know. And don't get me wrong. Yeah. Very rarely can a fatal four-way have everybody come out of that match looking better. I feel like every last participant in that match looks better than they did yesterday or the day before. Um, Was there an error or something I'm going off of? No, no, no. All right, uh, yeah. Just looking at it right now, Keith Brock. I thought um, heroic comeback. I thought Braun Strowman is a made man. I feel like Samoa Joe and Roman kind of didn't lose anything. They only gained a little bit, but Braun and Brock, Keith, especially with Braun, like how impressed were you with with, with Strowman? Because I, I, I'm like, this guy might be the next thing. Like, you know. Yeah, but, I mean. Whew, honey. <laughs> That's all you can really say about that whole match in general. Like, ooh, honey. Yeah, I mean, that was clearly um, the match of the night. And, uh, it had to be. But my question is. Why was it so fast paced? Like the match moved so fast that I was like, I can't keep up. I literally couldn't keep up with what was going on because it was like, 
Like people were moving so fast. I was like, I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna get hurt at oh. by the end of this match. Somebody's gonna be hurt. Oh no, they were hurt. Big. People were really hurt. Like oh. that. That's that's a disputable. Uh, and right. we had to play through the pain. Uh, like I said, I, I all four competitors really got it out, and I thought they really delivered a good match. Um, exactly. You know, Brock, even though I can feel it, the power of Strowman really didn't have no background. Uh, and, man, if he got his hands locked in, he was hitting that belly to belly. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh. Yeah. All of that. All yeah. of it. Like, you just took it in and just couldn't. My mouth wasn't. Drink it in, man. I was done. <laughs> I was done. And then when they, it was crazy because when they took Brock out on the stretcher, I was like, man, he going to lose this title and he ain't even going to be here. <laughs> right. But then I said, wait a minute now. This is this is Brock Lesnar we talking about. He ain't finished his wheel, wheel to the back and then be, that'd be the end of this shit. Y'all no, playing with no. me if it is. No, it's not going to happen like that. It ain't going to happen like that. But, uh, you know, it'll be interesting how it all comes out. Uh, with that, I'm gonna skip birthdays this week. Uh, major news in the house, Keish. Oscar's out for four to six weeks, I think. Yes, yes, she is. And that was confirmed by WWE.com. It's like that no dirt sheet site. This is the real stuff. Uh, wow. So, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. What they got going on, but Keish, when your bell cow get injured, they out. Now I think yeah. the good the good thing is when she comes back, they can drop her in on Raw or SmackDown. I would think they'll probably consider her SmackDown, but she's stiff enough for Raw. Right. Uh, now, now, now that we're talking about injuries, do you know how long Cass is going to be out with his injury? Um, they haven't gave an official date and time, but it looks like an ACL or meniscus tear. Oh, uh, ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean... He's going to be out a while. Yeah, this guy could be out for a few months. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, that's... Ooh, ooh, that sounds rough. Oh, okay. So, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but I read an article the other day, and I really need to stop doing this, but it was an interview with Daniel Bryan since we're talking about injuries and what not and it was interesting that he said that the reason why he retired is because they told him he had a lesion on his front uh, uh, I forgot where, where it said it was at somewhere on his brain right but they said a lesion can be they said sometimes we don't know what something is and it could be uh, anything and uh, they sent Daniel for testing um, the WWE sent Daniel for testing um, to see if he's capable of wrestling and they cleared him to wrestle but like the uh, but WWE themselves are like nah bro we're not taking that risk so they won't let him wrestle right yeah so that's where all this is interesting at see the thing with Paige is it's the same thing Paige's doctors have cleared her to wrestle but the WWE doctors haven't cleared her to wrestle and that's why Paige hasn't made her return yet right which is highly confusing and disappointing at the same time right. so mm, mm, mm. I mean I don't know what else to say about all of that uh, it was something else I think I had for the rest of the news this week, but uh, I don't kind of remember what it is. See, I really got to start writing this stuff down because I swear I'll be like, yeah, 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 I'll talk about this, this, and this. And dang, I don't remember really what it was. All right. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I need to get my life together. But anyway. <laughs> right. But, yeah. I don't remember what it was. But all I know is, um, uh, the pay-per-views were all right. SummerSlam was not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. 
Takeover was way better um, in my eyes, and that's all I'm going to say about that. So, definitely all I'm going to say about that. Uh, Is there Uh, anything we got got for the news? um, Oh, Ric Flair is doing better. Yay! Uh, He's responded to talking and stuff like that. Old is old. So, uh, we still with you, Rick. We still need you to kick out. Woo! And, uh, on top of that, Keith, no, I ain't got nothing, man. Uh, Big Cass is out, but Enzo's already at 205 laps, so I think they know what to do with him. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way that Neville walked away from him when he called himself confronted him. Right. Because that was hilarious in itself. Um, but it was it's a shock to everybody because we're like Enzo and two or five lives. But then again, it makes perfect sense. Why not move him to a division that he can excel in and you know and be around folks that he's on side. You know, like make it happen. You end you know, up being cruiserweight champion, man. You know, we just got to see. But hopefully, Enzo doesn't go over to the cruiserweight division and then start getting his ass kicked like he was on the main, you know, the regular main roster. Because then it's like, okay, you know, what was the point in all of that? Like, seriously. Right. So. But I digress. I digress. Um. Mm-mm-mm. What else did I have? Well, are we going in the raw to the SmackDown, uh, like, short, short... I, it was only a couple of things I wanted to talk about from each show anyway. Because, I mean, there was things that happened that we must discuss, Keith. Like, there were things that happened that we must discuss. Just for a hot second. Mm-hmm. Here. I, as a matter of fact, I can run it down for you in a quickness. Cena's on Raw, confronts Roman Reigns. They have a tag match. They win. The end. Like, right. <laughs> so, like, there's the end of that. That's that's it. That's all you really need to know about Raw. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. That is it. That's all you need to know about Raw. Like, nothing else happened. Like, literally nothing else happened. It, that's all you need to know about Raw. Um, <laughs> SmackDown. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, there's nothing else that I can remember about Raw that's, like, that I think you, it needed to be pointed out like that. <laughs> Only uh, uh, oh, well, Braun destroyed Brock. Uh, yeah, I was just about to bring that up. <clears throat> Other than that, it's like... Eh. And why did uh, Kurt Angle put his son in a match against Finn Balor? Because he's retarded. Like, I mean, hey, did you really think? Right. Uh, yeah, like, did, just why? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the Miz dropping truth bomb when he confronts Cena uh, oh, at, at Rubber Range. Yeah. Okay, so that whole segment had me like, whoa. <laughs> like, Miz is good in some type of way. Like, and oh, yeah. it wasn't in that. It wasn't in that moment where it's like, oh, he's just a hater. Like, it was in that moment, like, oh, no. He's getting out some frustration, right? <laughs> like, he is letting lo- loose some stuff he's been feeling on his heart. Like, y'all, y'all don't get it. You don't get it. Like, that man is letting out all kinds of um, underlining stuff that we didn't even know about. Trust. Yeah. And you know what he's talking about. So, there. I yeah, I agree with that one. Um... I don't think there was anything else, honestly, that uh, I felt needed to be. I mean, the Hardy Space, Seth and uh, uh, Dean, and they they lost, and then yeah, that was it. Like, <laughs> yeah. like that was yeah, that I, was I, it. Raw was largely uneventful. I mean, Cena covered a Raw yeah. and eventful. I mean, he's a free agent, and it's Cena, man. I, I can't get excited about Cena. Exactly. Like, I wasn't excited about Cena. Like, Kurt Angle's like, John Cena. I'm like, yeah. Like, okay, what? Is this what your big surprise was, Kurt? You dropped the ball, sir. Right. Like, no. No, 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 no. Now, here's the interesting thing about SmackDown, right? 
SmackDown, Smash Raw in less than an hour. Like, and within a good, I want to say a good 30 to 45 minutes, SmackDown um, outdid three hours of Raw. Like that. Like, in a snap. Done. Okay? Um, SmackDown was, dare I say, was, um, it was glorious. <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> I had to do it. I am so mm. ridiculous. But, but no, oh I mean, my God. I mean, when Bobby Roode comes in, it's like, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. All yeah. right, we rocking and rolling. Right. When I heard his music hit, I was like, oh, my God, Bobby Roode. Like, mm. as if I had not just seen him on, in the uh, championship match for the NXT title Saturday night. Like, mm. literally. Like, I lost it. I was like, oh, my God, it's Bobby Roode. I'm not going to lie, though. I was waiting for a couple of more debuts. But then again, we did get another one because backstage was Shelton Benjamin. Like, oh, my God. Like, I was like, oh, SmackDown coming with the heat. God, that's what I'm talking about. I was I was thoroughly excited. So, but, okay. So, Keith, mm -hmm. really, are they really going to team... Uh, Shelton Benjamin with Chad Gable like I think it works is this what we're doing no, I, I really I think it works I think so that I, is we'll see you next week you know yeah. we'll see you next week um, I'm glad Shelton uh, debuted on Smackdown uh, because finally yeah, we, we really, it was a long time coming. So glad to see him there. Glad to see him get that work in. Uh, oh, Dolph Ziggler's back. Like I said, SmackDown yeah. had, had the events. Right. So, SmackDown uh, had it going. Like I said, I think Bobby Roode could be champ by the end of the year. He can be. I got a feeling he will be. Right. But we will see. Because I think he's going to escalate because. up that roster fast. And, I mean, right. hey, after AJ's done with KO, uh, presumably, hey, man, a good few would be AJ Styles. Because instantly it's like, I know you, AJ. We'd have been in the same spot before, fool. Right. Right. And, and you work it off of there. Um, I think it's time for He's going to have some big matches. And the guy's a worker, and he knows that ring. He's a very good tactician. And I think he's going to really be an asset to the brand. But, yeah, SmackDown had all the debuts. SmackDown had all the changes. But Raw didn't really have much. But um, right. with that, uh, we are going to roll out and call this one a night. And we appreciate y'all listening. We will be back next Friday not this Friday coming up but next Friday to talk about something that gives us like a week and a half to play the show so right that's right Keith Keisha we are done bye, bye.